What's going on everybody? Jonathan Rahena here. Welcome back to the Passion Blade YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be upgrading the transmission cooling system on my 2003 Chevy Trailblazer by upgrading to the Durali 8000 series transmission cooler. Now I've read a lot of good reviews online about this cooler and I think this is exactly what we need to help keep the temps down on our new 4L60E. Now as many of you guys know from factory, the 4L60E is a very unreliable transmission and the number one killer of these transmissions is heat. So like I said, we're gonna be upgrading the transmission cooler on it because the Trailblazer's uh, transmission cooler from factory is just inadequate. Now, with that being said, uh, you're gonna need a couple specialty tools to do this install. One being a tube flaring kit. This right here is gonna come in clutch when you are going and cutting your transmission cooler lines and um, you're gonna add a flare to the end of each side that you cut so that you don't have to worry about any of the uh, pressure causing your hose to blow off while you're driving, then you have a failed transmission because you ran out of fluid. That would be no good. So get yourself a, a tube flaring kit. Uh, you can pick this up from your local auto parts store. Uh, you can rent it from them or you can go to your local Harbor Freight and pick this one up for about 15 bucks. That's what I did. Uh, up next, we got some copper strap right here. I picked this roll up for about $3 from Lowe's. Uh, some self tappers because there's not really any good mounting points underneath the grill where we're going to be mounting this at so um, We're gonna have to get creative with it. So that's where these straps and these uh, self tappers come in play uh, Got some extra hose here because the hose that came with the cooler is, is just not long enough. So um, This will be for that and last up um, This is just for anybody that's replacing their transmission if you're replacing your transmission You need to clean out your transmission cooler lines if you don't do that You run the risk of whatever's in those lines going back into your new transmission causing it to fail as quickly as you put it in So highly recommend this stuff right here. Uh, this is called cooler clean You can get this from your local AutoZone for about $17 a can I did two cans just to make sure that my lines were completely cleared out and once I saw that they were completely clear I knew I was good to get this cooler install started. So without further ado, let's get today's video started. Alrighty, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and remove our front grill from our Chevy Trailblazer. Uh, we're actually gonna be installing our transmission cooler in this section right here, right behind it. In my opinion, that's gonna be the best spot for it because that's where all this cold air rushes right through and will keep your transmission cooler nice and cool to keep those transmission temps down. Now guys, before you go ahead and start prying at this front grill, Please, please, please take your time with it. Uh, this plastic is very old, it's very brittle, and I've seen plenty of times people try to rush removing their front grill and they just shatter it into a bunch of little pieces. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get this front grill removed. Alrighty, so now that we have our front grill completely removed, it's time to go ahead and mock up our transmission cooler so we get a better understanding of how we're gonna be installing this. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, I wanted to go ahead and install it in this section right here. And as you guys could see, that's a pretty perfect fit right there. Now, uh, with that being said, it's time to go ahead and start assembling this thing. We're gonna be using those copper straps, one on each side. We're gonna drill it directly into this metal. And then we're also gonna be drilling them directly into this plastic right here. We're also gonna go ahead and get our hoses installed to this cooler as well and run those to the underside of the truck. And then we can go ahead and get started on the underside as well. Alrighty, now that we have our transmission cooler completely assembled, copper straps in place, hoses attached, uh, it's time to go ahead and get this thing mounted in place. Now, wanted to give you guys a little heads up. Uh, with an angle grinder, I went ahead and I cut the tips off of the self tapper so I don't ever have to worry about those ever just jamming into my condenser, causing my AC system to leak. I live in Florida, it's way too hot down here to not have AC in my truck. So, uh, as a little precaution, went ahead and did that. But anyway guys, let's go ahead and get this thing installed. And just like that, we have our new transmission cooler, nice, secured, and mounted in place. We have our transmission cooler lines running down through the grill and underneath the truck. 
And as you guys could see, we have this little gap right here in the air dam uh, between the radiator and the air dam, which is something that we don't want because we want all of the airflow going directly through the radiator. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is notch out a little spot right here for these hoses to fit comfortably and close up this gap. So uh, let's get that taken care of. Now that we have this notch cut out in the air dam, we have a comfortable spot for our transmission cooler lines to rest. Um, now we could focus on the OEM transmission cooler lines. As you can see, we have two lines right here, an inlet and an outlet. Uh, the one on the left right here is the one that we're going to be teeing into. Um, as you can see, I've made a couple markings on it, indicating where I'm going to be cutting the line. This little spot right here is going to be completely gone, so we'll have a little bit of a gap to separate the lines. Now, to get this line removed, we're just going to go ahead and remove this little dust cover right here. Once that dust cover is out of the way, Get yourself a little pick tool. Sometimes you can get away with doing it with your fingernails, but uh, pick tool is usually the best method to get these clips off. And just like that, you get the clip removed. Now once this clip's out of the way, uh, take caution because if you do this with a transmission system that you haven't drained yet, you're gonna have a lot of fluid in these lines, so make sure you have something underneath to catch it. Um, I've already drained my system out, so I should only have just a little bit of drippage coming out, if anything, but for right now, uh, yep, we're nice and clear. So. It's time for me to go ahead and get cutting into these lines. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that uh, cutter tool and uh, get these lines removed. Alrighty, now as you can see, we have a nice clean cut on this side and on this side right here. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take this side over here to the workbench, finish cutting off this section, add a flare here. We'll come underneath the truck and add one more flare here, and then we can go ahead, get everything reinstalled, and we'll be wrapping this installation up. Alrighty. Now that we got that midsection out, we can go ahead, add a flare to our end. Alrighty, now I got the hard line set in place on the uh, tube flaring kit on the 3 8 setting. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is set the uh, flare adapter on it and make sure she's all centered out like so. And it's time to go ahead and add a flare to it. Once you have your flare made, it should look just like this. Nice and smooth all around. And this little lip right here is gonna help prevent all the pressure that builds up in the transmission cooling system uh, to prevent the hose from popping off of it. So now that we have one flare made, it's time to go make one more on the line that's already on the truck. As you can see, our last flare has been made. She looks absolutely perfect, so it's time to go ahead, reinstall this fitting here, cut these lines down to size, slip them on, and then we can go ahead and wrap up this transmission cooler install.
just like that, we are all finished up with this install. Uh, both of our Durali 8000 series transmission cooler lines have been teed into our original factory lines. And uh, these flared ends, you could feel them underneath the hoses. These lines are not popping off anytime soon. Uh, one thing I have to warn you guys about is that I had to use a little bit of heat and transmission fluid to help slip these lines on. Uh, they were kind of a pain in the ass to slip on because of those flared ends, but other than that, they are on there and they are definitely not going anywhere. I also added a couple zip ties in as well to help keep things nice and tidy down here. But other than that, we're good to go. Alrighty guys, that's all I got for you today. I did want to mention one more thing prior to closing this video out, and that's for you guys to do a full system check prior to getting your Trailblazer back out on the road. Now what that means is go ahead, start your truck up, get underneath the underside of it, and make sure that you guys do not have any leaks on there. If you guys are good to go there, go ahead and check your transmission fluid level. It's probably gonna be a little bit low, so go ahead and top that fluid off, and then you guys will be good to go. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that thumbs up button. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for future Trailblazer content. I got a lot more of it coming for you guys. And until the next one, I'll see you then. Peace.